on to the next talk, Noini. Yeah. And uh, gout is one of the most, still one of the most strongly treated diseases. To know what is not gout is also very important. And Noini, please. Yeah. I think gout is a disease which is really very simple to treat. But it's been, it's complicated by general practitioners and orthopedic surgeons, if I may say so. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they've made the treatment complicated. Uh, let's move on to that. So I would like to define gout <coughs> uh, in the first place. And um, uh, as you can see, an elevated serum uric acid concentration, hyperuricemia, which everyone likes to pounce upon, is just one of the components of gout, okay? Uh, apart from that, what, are, what is equally or more important is getting an attack of acute arthritis in which crystals are deposited in the joint and are found in the leukocytes. As the disease advances, one may have aggregates of these crystals, which are called tophi, and also extra articular deposition of urate crystals, whether it's in the glomerulus, the tubules, or the interstitial tissue, uh, causing problems with uh, increased creatinine and uh, also uric acid nephrolithiasis, or stones, uric acid, stones which contain calcium and uric acid. Now, uric acid has been variably defined, but I have used the standard definition of 6.8 milligram percent. Now, this is just to bring to your notice that uh, there are four stages through which a person with gout passes through, not necessarily uh, so, but this is just a general rule of thumb. So, asymptomatic hyperuricemia, then an acute flare, of gout, an intercritical gout in which there may not be too many symptoms, and then advanced gout with complications. Now, as rheumatologists and orthopedic surgeons, we face uh, the acute flare of gout. We look at gouty tophi, patients with gouty tophi, and of course, asymptomatic hyperuricemia. <coughs> so, uh, before we look at what is not gout, I would just like to take you through a few clinically oriented EULA recommendations for the diagnosis of gout. So this is one of the 10 recommendations which says that an acute attack in which there is rapid development of pain, swelling and tenderness that reaches its maximum within 6 to 12 hours, especially with overlying erythema, is highly suggestive of crystal inflammation, though not specific for gout. Now here, the pictures show you that this acute pain and swelling can occur in the joint or in the bursa, or sometimes even in an enthesis. But it's important we take this history, that how soon did it develop? Was it a few hours? Was there overlying redness? And uh, very acute, severe pain. So this is what we need to ask before we consider that this patient has gout. And continuing with this recommendation, for typical presentations of gout, I showed you a picture of podagra. In the presence of hyperuricemia, one can make a clinical diagnosis. It can be accurate to say that this patient has da gout. However, for a definitive diagnosis, uh, a, de a demonstration of urate crystals and synovial fluid is necessary. So then what is not gout, even if there is hyperuricemia? So uh, the problem with all of us is that, you know, we have these panels which contain, whenever someone has arthritis, there are panels which also do uric acid. Okay, and one finds a uric acid of seven, and this patient has some sort of joint pain. Okay, and we, as often as orthopedic surgeons, often start treating that hyperuricemia as gout. When the patient has a monoarticular joint pain, which, mind you, is characteristic of gout, but which develops over days and persists for days to months, this is unlikely to be gout. So any joint pain which persists for a month or so 
is unlikely to be gout, even if it is monoarticular. Second, this is more obvious, but I'm uh, sort of reiterating my point that if even if there is hyperuricemia on the report, but the patient has polyarticular pain and swelling, it's unlikely to be acute gout. So these are the differentials that one needs to consider in this setting. Uh, it's preferable we don't ask for a uric acid, but we have the panels which give us the report. So even if that report is available to us, we should consider the possibility of rheumatoid arthritis, spondylosporiatic arthritis, or infection-related arthritis. And now we move to this, the main issue that we face is this of asymptomatic hyperuricemia. So the patient complains of the joint pains. We are not sure what it is. We ask for a panel. We have a uric acid, which is seven. And it puts us in a bit of a quandary. So asymptomatic hyperuricemia is a very common component of the metabolic syndrome, which means obesity, hypertension, diabetes. These are the components. Dyslipidemia are the components of the metabolic syndrome. And only a small proportion of these patients will develop gout. However, the incidence of gout increases as the severity and duration of hyperuricemia increases. And most importantly, guidelines do not recommend treatment of asymptomatic hyperuricemia. And as I mentioned earlier, hyperuricemia can occur because of dietary factors, because of high cell turnover due to conditions like psoriasis, or the more common diabetes, hypertension, dyslipidemia, drugs like aspirin, cyclosporin, or loop diuretics. So these are the conditions which cause hyperuricemia, but not necessarily gout, okay? And this is the most important slide where you can see, if you look at the graph carefully, that people who have uric acid between seven to eight milligrams per cent, and this is a very large number of patients uh, which were followed up, only under 10% or 5% actually developed gout. So there is no point in treating asymptomatic hyperuricemia. It's when the duration of hyperuricemia goes on for 15, 20 years that the chances and the uric acid increases about 9 or 10 that one, the chances of developing gout increase. I don't know whether I should include this. This is a different uh, aspect that some patients, uh, a large study was done in which they found that elderly females with hyperuricemia often had intermittent hand joint pain. So this is uh, something which is against or which, which is not in consonance with, with what I'm saying, but I'm just putting a different study in front of you. And the last is that chronic gout can mimic polyarticular rheumatoid arthritis. So this is just a bit of information on the side, but what I said earlier <coughs> is that asymptomatic hyperuricemia really needs no treatment, and uh, the conditions uh, we, we may address, some dietary advice or exercise, but nothing beyond that. And thanks for this opportunity to be again in person with all of you. Thank you.